I want to explain a little bit more about what I mean um, by marking up this drawing. While you're modeling it, I see. So if I were looking at this, and let me see if I can. I don't see any way to mark this up because it's not downloaded. So I'm going to bring up mine from my. Um, folder. Now I marked this one up and, and file saved as a PDF. So that's in one of our videos, how to use design review to do this. And it makes it kind of easy. So you might want to look back and it's the video says how to use design review. So I'm just going to use a highlighter here. And if I see this typical, so I see one here and I see one here. I know one that is on the other side. Okay, so where else are they? I'm, I'm assuming that if there's a fillet that is not called out and I just have to be able to see it, then that should have a um why is this one of one oh i didn't save all the sheets <coughs> that should have a fillet of that size so let me open this one so if i highlighted this okay so the first thing is it's saying these two i'm assuming the other two on the other side right when it says typical it means anything that's not specified is typically that size that's the size ball in mill or whatever that they're using. However, <clears throat> pardon me, if I go over here and let's say I zoom in right here, what is this fillet right here for this right here? Is that supposed to be 32 thousandths for this O-ring to sit in or is it square? Um, is this 32 thousandths? I mean, what, what is that? Are those 32 thousandths there? So those are questions that I have. When I zoom in and I see, you know, I see them here and they're called out there. But when I see them other places and they're not called out, am I assuming correctly? When it says typical and it doesn't give a number, that's why I hate putting, unless otherwise specified, all fillets will be blah, blah, blah. I don't really know how many there are on the part for me to count and make sure that I've got enough in my, in my part. <clears throat> so then uh, if I go back to the first sheet, let me move back here. So this is point three. So I'm assuming that that one's point three. Right? Doesn't have a 2x in front of it. So you could put a 2x question mark over that. Right? Or you could put that dimension. Is this supposed to be 0.3 as well? These are just things that are not dimensioned really well. And the other thing that I see here on this, you know, it gives us this diameter. It gives us a height. It doesn't really tell us how far this is dimension side to side it's saying it's in the center well what's the center what what's the tolerance of this is is three places and i think he uses five thousandths but do we always spot the center on that so that's that's a question mark um is this 90 degrees is this supposed to be perpendicular I don't know, you know, this dimension right here, am I making my construction line perpendicular through the center point? I don't know. It doesn't have an angle here on this line for me to know if that's the same. Yeah, Nick. Um, I have a question, which is mm -hmm. one of my assumptions. The 2.125 in the middle, uh -huh. is that... For that center hole, those uh, little yeah. markings are pretty terrible. Yeah, so this shouldn't this have a diameter right here? That's another thing to assume. Yeah. Very good. 
And, you know, they have a lot of stuff in text, but they have diameters by that. Um, let's see. Do I know, is this supposed to be the same on the other side? Is 45 degrees, is this part symmetric? That would be just a blanket statement. Is this part symmetric? Is this hole right in the middle? Is this centered around this hole? And that's that's a kind of a problem in plus minus tolerancing. You know, we assume symmetry, but you know things can be off a little bit. So we always need a tolerance. I found a hard time putting this dimension on, and I'm going to show you my part in this first sketch. I had a part hard time putting this dimension on, but this being 45 degrees, and this being the certain height that it states over here in the right. And then putting this right in the center and getting this 90 degree, you know, perpendicular to the midpoint. There, it seemed like there were too many dimensions or not enough information to tell me really what's the right way to draw this front view. And is this symmetric left to right? You know, usually we have a dimension from one side to the center and then you have your overall dimension or at least dimension the center of that. Um, when you look at this, these dimensions, this should be a diameter right here, right? Because that's, that's this cylindrical object right there. And let me zoom out a bit. And here's a dimension here. So I see that these two should have diameter symbols. They're circular. It's the front and the back the same. And it says front and rear. So this is the front and the rear view is missing. But this diameter is the same. So it says um, another thing that I didn't see is that it doesn't say that this should be. Uh, it says on the front and the rear for this counter bore or this flat bottom hole. And that's for an O-ring seal. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> Both of these are 0.219. And then we have a 2.817 and a 1.75. Well, if you take 1.75 plus 0.219 plus 0.219, it does not end up 2.187. It's 2.188 or more. It at least ends in an 8. So which one is right there? And where is this located side to side? And what side should it be dimensioned from? It's just assumed to be centered. The same thing happens with these holes. These are cylinders, uh, spigots, but it says counterbore these things. And it looks like they're centered here. Are they supposed to be right here on this axis? 0.187? You know, normally you don't dimension something that's hidden. So it's leaving us in a little bit of a, a question. We have this radius here that goes all the way around. Right? So it'll trail all the way around that circular object. Is it the same on the other side? And are all four holes dimension these same dimensions in the X and the Y from the faces? I don't know. Same thing down here. Are all four of these in the X and the Y dimension from the, you know, the outside faces the same dimension? How many of these do we have? How many of these do we have? How far is this off the center or off the edge? How, where is that located? The inside is located only on two sides. Well, is it the same on the other sides? And this says 0 0.068 deep all the way around. Well, there's another dimension on the other sheet. This tells me where it's located in and out or vertically here, but it doesn't really tell me left to right. Yes, you had a question, Nick? Yeah, I've got I've got two questions. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going over a lot here. Um, 
as far as assumptions. Is mm -hmm. it okay if my assumptions don't have that? Like some of them I understood, even though it's clearly not to like ASME standards. You're assuming it though. Okay. Right, okay. so anything that we have to assume because I didn't put a quantity on there, that's an assumption. Gotcha. Um, and then my second question, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is standard or not, but mm -hmm. like some of the descriptions for the holes, um, it'll call out for like a 36. Right. Uh, but then it'll follow up saying that it's being tapped with a 632, which it, it wouldn't use as number 36 drill. Right. It uses number so, six drill. So then you, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't normally tell them what to drill for a tap. Right. Um, but, you know, if they want us to do that, evidently people have made it with the number 36 and it's worked. It may not be as tight. It also does not tell us what class of thread. So that would be a 2A, B, or C. I'm sorry, a class 1, 2, or 3. And a 2, I'm sorry, 1, 2, or 3B. So those are the three definitions of the tolerances that we have for threads. So it doesn't really give us tolerances by just saying 632. We're assuming it's a two, class two, which is normal hardware store variety. Gotcha. We can go over that if you'd like to look at that. It's the, it's the makeup of a threaded hole call out. Okay. Yeah, it, it just seemed like they were giving us a bunch of additional, just not necessary information. Right, right. And usually we don't do that. We tell them what the end result should be. And I've seen Creo do that, right? I've seen that. I've seen software put the uh, drill size and then the call out for the whole. Well, really what we're supposed to do is just show what the call out should be. What I'm looking for is that right there. So you see, I have another dimension here. This is redundant, and this is redundant, and this is redundant. But it also doesn't tell us how deep this bore right here should go. Does it go all the way to the center? If you were a machinist, how would you know how deep to bore that? You know, that square hole. How far do I go up and stop cutting? Um, a lot of these are redundant. And then this construction note right here tells us what size it is and how wide it is, but it doesn't give us an angle. Let me zoom in on that. We either need a depth right here or we need an angle on that. In the construction notes, it says it's 0.5 wide. So it also doesn't show us in any of these pictures if it's centered or offset. Same thing happens with this, this whole thing. We're just assuming that centered. How much can it be off? This is a vent hole, so it's not as particular. Now, when you model this, you're going to see that mine is just barely, it, it makes it barely flat. And that's what you want. You just have to, when it says a spot face, you guys, here's what we do. We spot face this diameter and we start milling that diameter until we get a full flat on that curved edge at the top that is absolutely flat for that di full diameter. That gives something, uh, if you wanted to put a, a uh, threaded plug in there, it wants to seal off instead of being on that curved surface. So this depiction is not very good. Um, we see that this one goes this deep, and then it says to tap it this deep. So that's pretty good. And it shows us on the front page where the, well, it shows us right here where it should be located. But is it located right in the center? This one is 35 degrees from vertical, this little angled one. And this is the size of the hole. Well, how do you, do you, um, I guess you would start drilling from the outside, point one, and how do you, 
how do you know how far up and down where to start that hole? You know, if I drill that hole from down here and I start it up here, how far down do I start that hole for it to be in this location? This is this is hard. You would have to put a pin in here, find the center of the pin, or measure the edge of the pin at this angle to find out if it's at this location. So I'm going to show you guys how to make this hole. Has anyone made this hole yet? That's where I stopped. I, I did. Okay. Nick? Uh, I did, but I'm not sure if it's right or not. Okay, so I'm going to take my finished part, and I'm just going to roll through those, those um, features. Does that make sense? And then you can go back and watch that video, and then you can finish your part out as you like. So, <clears throat> let's see. Um, this doesn't tell us, does it say, okay, so it says drill this spot face and drill this, this deep and tap 632. How far do we tap it? So the tap is going to start at the face of the spot face where we made a flat. And then how deep does that need to go? It doesn't tell us. So these are the things that I'm talking about as far as um, essentially what we're having to assume. Are there any other questions over that? Because, you know, if someone gave you this input, these are the things you want to go back and clarify because you don't want to make the model wrong. And you need to get all this clarification. And it may seem like you should assume it, but you're trying, you want to explain to someone, you're trying to make this right the first time. And I'm sorry that I'm asking these questions. It may seem silly to you, but I'm trying to make this right the first time and do the best job I can the first time. So, I, you know, you so that I stay on target for whatever kind of deadline I have. If I have a bunch of assumptions and I have to go back and change it a million times, that that's going to take up some valuable time. Okay, so that is the assumptions portion. Let's go to the model. <clears throat> 